hear you, Laura. Okay. Hello, Maria. Hey, Maria, can you hear me? Hi. Wonderful. Can you hear me well? Yes, I hear you. Okay. How, how about you, uh, uh, Lila? Lila, can you hear me? Yeah, I go by Laura. I have to change Laura. my name on there. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, nice I can hear you. you. Excellent. Okay. All right, guys. Wonderful. So uh, we're ready to go. So thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Uh, we have uh, two of you uh, on the live uh, video, but we have a bunch of other students which are actually not able to do the live video. So they're going to be receiving the recordings uh, later because we have quite a few students that are uh, outside of the U.S and very uh, extreme uh, time zone differences. So they will be uh, receiving the recording as well as you, you guys, you're gonna be receiving the, the class recordings later on. So you can have it uh, at your, for your reference as well. <coughs> so welcome to the Character Design for Children's Publishing course. Uh, I am your host and your uh, guide for those uh, six weeks. And I'm super excited for you guys joining me on this uh, really marvelous adventure. Just to give you a, qu a quick uh, review of how I, the class is going to be conducted. First of all, this is not just uh, a lecture that is going to be talking for two hours. I welcome your insights and your questions throughout uh, those two hours. And I want to hear from you whether you have something that is unclear or is there are things that you would like to contribute to the discussion. I always welcome. So don't feel uh, obliged to be quiet for two hours. I really welcome your uh, participation, okay? So uh, let me, uh, I'm gonna put the sh screen sharing here. So I'm gonna get into the, uh, into my presentation. Just give me a second. The screen sharing here. One second, I'm still a little bit new for the, the whole uh, Zoom thing. So just give me a second, okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Fantastic. So let's do a little quick review what we're going to be covering during those uh, six weeks. So uh, in this session, the first one, we're going to be uh, this is going to be an introduction class, and what you're going to be uh, covering in this class is what it takes to create iconic characters, character IPs, which stands for intellectual properties. We're going to cover various examples, uh, some case studies that we're going to be looking at that uh, started from children's books, and then they grew into things that are much bigger than that, into animations, uh, merchandising, uh, some of them actually even theme parks, and many, many other great things. And we're going to study, going to look at what it really takes to, uh, to create those uh, IPs. Uh, that start from children's books. Uh, in week two, we're going to be covering the power of storytelling. Uh, we're going to uh, learn what it takes to create a narrative that engages and inspires, and what it takes to move and inspire audiences, and how to create an emotional connection. We're going to be reviewing your home assignments. Uh, we're going to have in each class uh, home assignments, and uh, I hope you're going to enjoy them. I make them really exciting and rewarding. So I hope you're going to be learning a lot from them and we're going to be reviewing them next week. And then we're going to have some more case studies uh, for what we're going to be discussing in week two. In week three, we're going to learn how to create effective and compelling visuals, how to create a character that serves the story and the message in the plot or the brand we're going to be creating. And again, we're going to be uh, reviewing class assignments, the home, the home assignments and more case studies. And we're going to have uh, in each and every class uh, uh, at the end, we're going to have uh, questions and answers. But again, like I mentioned before, I welcome your uh, questions even during the class if something is not clear. So that's very, very important to, to clarify that. In week four, we're going to learn uh, the power of thinking big. We're going to learn what it takes to create the blueprint for characters that can grow into a franchise, how to approach and strategize your intellectual property or in short IP with the right mindset that can grow and expand. Again, we'll have a case studies and Q&A. 
week five, we're gonna uh, discuss cross-platform, um, cr excuse me, cross-platform applications, planning ahead with your IPs and building a compelling brand that intrigues and inspires. Again, we're gonna review uh, home assignments and Q and A's. In week six, the last week, uh, the final week, we're gonna be uh, learning, we're gonna be working on planting the seeds for your own personal project, reviewing and integrating the course and each student's progress that comes uh, further. So the main three goals of this class, the first goal is I would like you guys, each and every one of you to really find your own unique expression. This is, I cannot emphasize that enough because some of the examples we're gonna be covering are uh, actually great examples of authors that created very, very successful uh, IPs by, cre by basically creating their own visual style that I have never seen before. This is exactly what I want you guys to find, whether you have it or not, maybe you already found your kind of what we call uh, your visual style. Uh, if you did find it, that's wonderful. So I want us to focus on, to fine tune your visual style. And if you're not sure about your visual style, that's even better, then we can explore what is your uniqueness and what are the best mediums that you can approach to express your ideas? I had uh, some uh, questions from uh, some of my, our participants before the class are what, what kind of digital tools we're gonna be learning in this class. So none, we're not gonna be covering any digital tools. Although if you're using digital tools, that's wonderful. And if that's what you wanna choose for the class, that's great. But really the most important skill I wanna focus in this class is your creativity, your original thinking, and your ability to express your ideas uh, through drawing. So I hope each and every one of you uh, have at least a pen and a paper, a pencil and a paper, so you can not just take notes, but also throughout those six weeks, uh, uh, express your ideas through drawings and also through writing. Having a sketchbook is, uh, is highly recommended, uh, at least uh, if you ha don't have a personal sketchbook, at least have one dedicated for this class. It's very important to have a, a sketchbook that basically is your visual journal where you can put not just notes and ideas, uh, maybe gather uh, various inspirations from uh, magazines and on printouts, inspirational clips, but also express your ideas. So that's very, very important. So let's move to the, to the next slide. <laughs> so I would like to uh, tell you a little bit about myself. What is my professional background? Uh, I've been a professional visual storyteller for over 20 years, and uh, I've worked with many, many different clients. I worked with uh, Disney, with Fox 2000, in, uh, with Sony Games, uh, with Diesel, Walmart, Jax, uh, Boys and Girls Club, many, many, many companies. And uh, some of the uh, fields I've uh, provided my services are in animation, in games, in toys, toys. theme parks, advertising, children's books, obviously, educational campaigns, and branding. And throughout my 20 years, I gained a lot of experience, which uh, really I would like to share with you guys for the purpose of inspiring you. And I, everything that I've learned, I'm here to share with you. So anytime you have a question, anything, something is not clear or something that you would like to understand further, uh, please feel free to uh, jump in and uh, express uh, whatever it is that uh, you would like to know or you would like to share. So, uh, I want to share with you some of my uh, some of my work. Uh, my uh, kind of entry into the media and entertainment field was uh, in the year two thousand and two. After I graduated uh, arts and ecology of design, uh, which is a uh, and I had a I had a thesis project, uh, which was my own adaptation for the children's book, uh, The Wind in the Willows. Are you familiar with the book? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Okay. Wonderful. So Wonderful. what I did is I basically created my own uh, adaptation or reinterpretation of the book. And I created a, that was my thesis project, uh, graduating from, uh, from, the, from the college. And I basically uh, took the, the story and I gave it of something more of a Jules Verne kind of twist. I turned it into like more steampunk kind of uh, uh, influences because I love steampunk. And I made the adventure much more epic while maintaining the characters, but definitely giving it a much more uh, a visual uh, expansion to the world that was created by Kenneth Graham. 
So here you can see some of my, uh, uh, some of the characters I've created. And I actually even added additional characters, like you can see here, the hog. Uh, there was no, uh, a very clear uh, antagonist, a bad guy in the story. So I added the hog and the story was basically expanding the world into a much, much more imminent threat uh, without giving too much of the story because it's still in development uh, with the studio. It, be, it was bought by Disney and then it was uh, developed uh, after Disney with Fox and now it's back with Disney because Disney acquired Fox. So it's a very, very epic film and it's still been, been in development for quite some time. Uh, it's really my vision to see it uh, coming to fruition because sometimes the studios, uh, they work very, very slow on projects. So here you can see some more of my uh, concept art I created both for the world, the characters, <laughs> and as you can see, I like exploring uh, many, many different styles and the uh, visual uh, approaches when, whenever I'm creating a project. Sometimes I'll, I'll draw with, uh, in pencils, sometimes I draw with uh, pen and ink, sometimes with color pencils, sometimes with, uh, you know, here you can see the, the ship and that interior were done in acrylics. Today I would use uh, digital uh, painting techniques, etc. So it's really about having fun. In this case, I had a lot of fun kind of re-envisioning re this entire world and this story. Uh, here you can see a sculpture that I've created when I went to pitch the project to the studios. I went with the maquettes, which I presented to the studios. And that really, really helped the present experience in sculpting or not would be an, an incredible experience for you to also uh, uh, to explore sculpting when you are uh, creating characters. Because first of all, the first reason I was uh, I'm, I was doing sculpting because I got stuck when I was doing the dry, when I was designing my characters, I came to kind of a dead end and I couldn't really figure out how I'm going to visualize my characters. I'm trying to get on my iPad. Okay. So I'm 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 calling you. Yes, I just. I'm sorry to you. interrupt. No, no, that's okay. Did you? Are you in right now? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna get off the phone. Okay. 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 Are you Are you good, Lila? Yeah. Sorry about that. I just couldn't see the pictures on my phone, so I'm I can't got on my iPad. <laughs> okay wonderful so uh, what i was talking about is about the sculpture uh, the sculpting which is a great uh, an additional tool to express and explore ideas so when i when i got into a kind of a dead end with my uh, character designs i started sculpting it because i realized that when i create 3d uh, physical models of my characters it's easier for me to draw them uh, i was basically using them for reference but they kind of start to evolve into like really full on uh, characters. And I invested a lot of time into my sculpting. And then I, I basically uh, came up with this really uh, great collection of, uh, of characters, uh, which I eventually were part of my uh, pitch presentation. So I used the material called Super Sculpty, if you're familiar with that which you can uh, bake in a regular home oven. And the is about uh, 10 to 12 inches high. So that's a uh, really wonderful uh, part of the process. And again, I encourage you guys to also uh, jump into sculpting. I, I didn't really study sculpting. I kind of lear learned it uh, on my own uh, while I was doing the work. And it was really, really fun uh, and rewarding process. As, it, as you can see, I used a lot of found objects, even adding like uh, into the sculptures, like parts of broken toys, and the all kind of uh, gadgets that I had uh, laying around. So it was really, really a fun, fun part of the project. At the end of the day, uh, the creative process, the way I see it is about enjoying it. <laughs> so I really want you to come to this class and experience those six weeks with a mindset like a little child, playful, curious, and open to new things. So don't, uh, so I, I would really request that you leave your adult suits uh, outside for those two hours and really have fun uh, with everything we're gonna be doing here. And uh, even after those two hours, the, this is the kind of mindset I would like to have in our, in our class. 
This is another project that I was developing at the time with the Disney television. It's called Sushi Avenue. It's basically a world uh, that is made uh, from uh, living and breeding sushi characters. Uh, I came up with this idea when I was uh, reading an article on the internet about uh, a sushi chef competition between children. And what I found out that kids were really, really creative when they were creating their sushi uh, uh, entries to the competition. The kids treated their, their sushi creations more like they're creating uh, art or like toys. It wasn't you know, rooted in culinary uh, preferences, but more in like really, let's, like, let's create something fun and crazy. So they would mix uh, you know, fruits and vegetables without really thinking about uh, how it's gonna taste actually. They were more focused about how it's gonna look like. Really, uh, really mind blowing what I what I what I saw, and based on that I created those characters. So you can see here again uh, different uh, approaches and different uh, expressions of my ideas. You can see here uh, here uh, with my cursor. You can see those three D modeling. I had a, a I had a guy that was doing three D modeling for me. Here on the left, you can see a 2D rendering that I created uh, in Adobe Illustrator. This is actually a vector, a vector image. And uh, here you can see some of my sketches. And there's, these are here below some of the creations that I saw uh, online that really triggered my imagination. And uh, it was in development with Disney TV for some time and eventually they decided to shelve it. But nevertheless, I, the, create, the process was really fun for me and very rewarding. And I really had a lot of a great time uh, developing that. Awesome. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. here you I love see, it. Oh, thank you. Here you can see uh, some of the publications I've worked on. On the, on the top, you can see three, the, the three children's books that I uh, offered and illustrated. Snurdle, Thor the Polar Boar, and DJ Bear. On the bottom, you can see a children's book that uh, on the left side, on the bottom, uh, Isabella Castaspella a children's book that I've uh, illustrated for another client. It's a really beautiful story about a little witch and her friends. Here, it's a book called Starheart, which is a, it's a book in Hebrew that I did for mm. another author in Israel. It's a book about sharing and giving and really finding uh, how we can be contributors uh, in our world through uh, kindness of the heart. And I mm -hmm. uh, think she's going to be uh, looking to translate it to English at some point. That's kind of uh, her plan. Back to my books, a little bit to tell you about kind of my journey and what, what's my approach in, in storytelling. So, I, you know, I grew up uh, just like, you know, other kids in the 20th century, uh, entering to the 21st century and a lot of really uh, a variety of children's books. My favorite were Dr. Seuss when I was a kid in Israel. I was really deeply influenced by his uh, pen and ink drawings, which are very expressive and very uh, whimsical and very witty. So I really love in my children's books to use that kind of same style. Looks like pen and ink. I actually do. I use uh, digital tools, but uh, the, the style is uh, very much influenced by Dr. Seuss. In my first book, Snurdle, is a story of a little boy who is born to a mother snail and a dad turtle. And uh, he's born, they're born, they live in a society that does not embrace uh, uniqueness. And uh, to be different is something that is not embraced by the society. So when a snail and a turtle get, got married, that creates a problem because a snail is supposed to only get married with a snail and a turtle is supposed to be get married with a turtle. So they are outcasts from their society and they embark on a journey and an adventure looking for a home that will embrace and accept them. So that's what the story is about. And the mm -hmm. reason I wrote that story is because oftentimes in my life, and I think many of you viewers can uh, resonate with this kind of uh, sensibility, we find ourselves in places that we're not always felt accepted for who we are. Because I think in many circles of society, oh, but by the way, are Marie, is Maria still there? Uh, I don't see her. <clears throat> I don't see Mar Maria, are you still there? It's just you and I right now. Okay, I just want sure that she's not. Uh, we don't didn't lose her. Anyway, Maria, if we lost you, just uh, you know that uh, this class is record is being recorded, so you will uh, uh, you will receive the uh, you will receive the recording after the class. One second, I receive your message.
Okay, one second. Let me. Uh, I have another student here that uh, just uh, trying to enter. Just give me a second. I'm going to send them the link. Just give me a second, okay? Sure. One. A second. Second, I'm just make sure. Okay, so uh, I was talking about uh, uh, my children's book, Snurdle, and the, my, my book, oh, hold on, I have another, uh, Maria, she's trying to enter the class again, so I, I got, let's see if she's, I just admitted her. Maria, are you with us? Maria, can you see us now? I'm sorry, I, I just looked out for a moment. Okay, so uh, welcome back. We're gonna have another student joining us. We had uh, some technical difficulties. So Rafael is gonna be joining us. Just give us a couple of minutes. I would like to uh, wait for Rafael also to join us. I restarted because I was hearing like uh, with interruptions and I needed to restart my PC. So this is why I just got lost for a moment. Okay. But it is okay now. Okay, fantastic. So just give me a second. I would like to let Rafael join us as well because. Uh... Just give me a second. I want to make sure that Rafael is entering the class correctly. Yeah, I just wanna, wanna see if Rafael didn't join us yet, one second. Okay, let's continue. I send uh, Rafael the link, so he should be joining us in a minute. And I'm just gonna keep my email open in case he has, uh, he has any issues. So uh, uh, my two other books, uh, Thor the Polar Bear and DJ Bear, they also talk about very similar themes, which I found very compelling in children's story, which is about an identity but really what it takes to uh, find our own identity in the world. Uh, in Thor, the polar bear is about a little boar who is born uh, into a society of boars, obviously, but he's not happy within the, in his environment where everybody are dirty and living in the mud. 
So he wants to, uh, he looks for something much more to, uh, in life than being in the mud and being in the dirt. So he wants to go to the North Pole to find uh, uh, a new society, a new environment where he can live uh, with the white uh, 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 animals of the North Pole. But then he actually realizes that even in the North Pole, you have to change your fur color uh, during the winter time to white. So then he realizes that it's not enough to be different. You actually, even in this new environment, you have to adjust, you have to be like everyone else. And it's about his journey to uh, kind of uh, finding his place in the North Pole and eventually coming back, going back to his uh, society and bringing change to his, uh, to his society from what he've learned in the North Pole. Uh, DJ Bear is again, uh, it talks about what it takes to embrace our uh, dreams, our vision, our life, uh, our life dreams and to live them. It's a story of a, of a bear that is born into a family that has been in the honey trade business for, for many, many years. And uh, from a young age, DJ Bear had uh, musical inclinations, but they were uh, suppressed by his family. So uh, DJ Bear, he actually uh, kind of had to go along with uh, what his family has been forcing him. And he grew up to be a businessman until something happens to him one day, which made him question everything he's been doing because he's just been a businessman and just selling honey for a living. And then he has to go back and to find his lost child, childhood dream. And uh, that kind of adventure leads him to the end of the story where he actually uh, becomes, he, he goes through transformation and becomes a DJ, uh, which kind of embracing his uh, musical dreams. So this is some of the books I worked on. And it's, for me, it's really rewarding, not just to inspire children through my, uh, what I create, but also to, uh, to appeal to adults as well. Every, every children's book has uh, also interaction with at least one adult, either by buying it or reading it to the child. So I find it here a golden opportunity to also to uh, tune in into the child within the adults. And there is a room to inspire and also to empower adults, which I think is uh, equally important. Let me check what's going on with Raphael because I sent him the link. Just give me a second. One second. I'm writing him, we're, we're waiting for him to join us. Okay, I'm waiting for Rafael's uh, email. I mean, uh, his request to join into the Zoom call. So these are some of the books and I, again, the, those, uh, the books below are, were done for our clients. And this book, uh, Tree Star, was kind of a very interesting project because I was a co author and that was hired by a California based nonprofit that is uh, dedicated to preserving the environment and educating people about the importance of trees. So I co authored the book with another author and I did provided all the artwork. And it has a lot of very, very similar themes to the Lorax, which we're going to be uh, discussing later. Although at that time, I actually did not read the Lorax. So that was a very uh, interesting uh, kind of coincidence. And a lot of the things that uh, in the book, uh, Tree Star, are inspired by the, the person who actually started the nonprofit, the person himself, that I was incorporating their life story into, this, into the book. So let's move forward. So I want to talk about my creative approach in, the, uh, in, in what, what we do in visual storytelling and children's books. Everything starts with a drawing, and the, the more the more we draw, the more we can discover, and the more we try new things with drawing, because drawing is a very very forgiving medium. It's not like oil paint or acrylics or even digital painting. It's very uh, immediate and it's very uh, intimate. I find drawing is a very intimate uh, process. Just uh, you know, using your pencil on a paper an eraser and the, it's very forgiving because you allow yourself to, to do a lot of mistakes, which is fine. And I think uh, when we grow up to become how important it is okay to do mistakes. And when we express things through drawing, we allow ourselves to uh, have really a lot of fun. It's very intuitive and it's very, very rewarding. So uh, here you can see some of my drawings that I did on the top left here. You can see the sketch that I did uh, for my children's book, Thor the Polar Bore. Here we can see some uh, character uh, concept drawings I did for an animated film about plants. 
here you can see a, a, a character design redesign that I did for a very famous uh, children's character called Uncle Uncle Wiggly, which is very was a very popular uh, children's book uh, in the previous century, in the 50s uh, or even before that. And I was hired by the family to recreate the character and to come up with a new take. And uh, they are working on uh, turning that into an animated film. And here you can see some of my sketches for uh, Sushi Avenue. And here a couple of more sketches for uh, another uh, educational campaign I did about kids with special needs. And on the right here on the bottom, my uh, drawing for the cover for DJ Bear. Again, drawing is a very, very important and uh, super fun medium to explore ideas. And uh, if you're not sure whether you want to do a children's book, whatever medium you want to explore, that's okay even to do it just to use drawing. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with drawing. Here we can see some more uh, sketches I've done. Again, I like to uh, draw with color pencils. You can, you can see here that the uh, gentleman with the beard using graph graphite pencil and a red pencil. Here are some uh, various characters. I used uh, just graphite here, a pink, another pink pencil. Again, a graphite here and a red pencil here. And again, the materials we're going to need in this class are sketchbook and drawing tools. That's all you need. Uh, and I, I think it's really at this point, it's not really important to uh, uh, dive into digital uh, tools, uh, which again, you can do, but really I want you to have fun with the drawing process in this class. Uh, so before we get into the, uh, discuss the, the fundamentals of iconic characters, I want to, first of all, I want to hear from each and every one of you guys uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, and I would like to hear why are you in this class, and what is uh, what is it that you are looking to get from the class? So let's start with you, uh, Laura, or Lila. How should I call it, Lila or Laura? Oh, sorry, Laura. Laura. All right, Laura. So let's start with you. Please tell us about about yourself a little bit. Well, I've been I've been drawing since I was a child, so I've been drawing a long time. Um, but I've never published, I've never um, put it out in the world because I wanted to have enough material to be able to, um, well, actually it's kind of strange, but my illustrations um, started to tell me the story. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I can show you, I don't know if you can see, I can't, I'm really I have also computer issues. Like, I don't know how to see everybody on here. So do, do you see my uh, screen, uh, my slide? Do you see them? I see your slide. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But I that's, just, that's... anyway, I just wanted to show you something, but I don't know if I can. There is a, in a Zoom, there is a, at the, at the bottom on the, of your navigation menu, the, the, the bottom there is an option that says share screen. So you can share your screen with us. Maybe it's because I'm on an iPad. Hey, I think you still have, I think, uh, I don't know about iPad. I think you should have the option. Uh, well, I probably need a class and, <laughs> and Zoom. <laughs> but anyway, um, I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me? Yes. Can you hold, uh, Laura, can you hold on one second? My student, uh, uh, Rafael, having a trouble uh, logging. You just give me a second. I would like to, I'll get back to you in a second. Just give me a second. Okay. Just give me a second. My apologies. Second. Second, I want to see when I send him the right to.
second. Where I just sent Rafael another link. I think the other link I sent him before it wasn't working. So I hope this one is going to work. So please continue, Laura. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Please continue. Um, so anyway, I I have about, I would say about 14 paintings um that turned into a children's book. And mm -hmm. um just a, a little bit about my background is um I have a fascination with the, uh, and I've already talked to you for a long time, but I have a fascination with the, um, like the, the, the fairies, the devas, you know, I love Brian Froud's work. Can you hear me? Can you say the name again? Yeah, I said, I, I'm a big fan yes. of Brian Can you repeat Froud. that? You said fairies, uh, fairies and what? I'm not familiar with him. Please tell fairies. us about him. The fairies, the elementals, the devas, the angelic, you know, I'm very fascinated by the other worlds, uh -huh. aliens, you know, anything that's otherworldly is fascinating to me. Mm -hmm. So Brian Froud, and I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but Brian Froud was one of the first artists that I was extremely drawn to. And, <clears throat> and he's, he's actually not just an artist, he's very tuned into the to the other worlds. Do you know who I'm talking about? I think I've seen the book. Uh, there's a book called Fairies, right? With yeah. watercolors. Is that yeah, what so he, yes, I'm yeah, very familiar with his work. Okay. Absolutely you know. amazing. Okay, okay. So anyway, that's he's my inspiration. Okay. Yeah. And so a lot of my artwork is I have a different style of art, but a lot of that has uh, I feel that you know that that's going to be very important uh, an elemental piece in in the work i do and that's really all i wanted to say <laughs> okay yeah. oh, wonderful so you're interested in fairies and what are your expectations from the class what are you looking to gain from this class um well i'm very excited about this class i love your artwork i love what you're sharing i Thank feel you. like it was perfect timing and perfect connection so uh, to be honest with you, everything you're sharing so far is just fine, perfect, lovely, excited. Okay, okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Laura. What about you, Maria? Please uh, tell us about yourself and what are you here to get from the class? I'm sorry, I Maria. didn't find you. Yeah, hi. So yes. I am. You hear me, right? I we can hear you pretty well. Yes. Okay, so I work in editorial services for some time now, and uh, I have a very curious child who is uh, doing his stuff on his own since a very young age. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, I have um, published books with him, and I have tried different styles of work uh, just to make his... Um, uh, projects come true and uh, I have built a company for him uh, so basically now I have to put my uh, work somehow organized and um, start uh, you know he's 13 so when he's 14 I want that he starts his projects on his own mm -hmm. and uh, since um, art is not my uh, is not my subject you know I'm more on languages and uh, this type of uh, like business development and things I need somehow um, your input and uh, insights and experience so that they get myself somehow on track I have books uh, I can show you some of my things that I have done right now it was on share screen right yes please show us I would love to see that so uh, it is disabled for me if you could just enable it please oh one second uh, what, what what did you say? What uh, I should stop uh, my share sc screen sharing now to allow you? No, that it is just uh, host disabled participant screen sharing. It you should just enable it. My capacity to share. Okay, one second. So I'm doing. I'm gonna stop screen sharing. Let's see how I allow you uh, to share uh, your screen. Just one second. Uh, by the way, Rafael, we cannot hear you. Are you with us, Rafael? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, fantastic. I really, really apologize for the 
technical difficulties we had. Uh, I'm sorry that you had to, you missed some of the uh, our few minutes, but you're gonna get the recording and you can catch up. But uh, we're gonna get to you as well. Uh, so welcome to uh, the jo you, you joining us, Rafael. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so one second, I want to see how I allow uh, Maria. Do you know how I allow you guys to share your screens? Or Rafael, do you guys know how to do? It? I'm trying to figure out how to do it. I think that you have uh, the settings below for the call, and you have just to enable uh, share screen capacity for participants. Uh, one second, I'm trying to see. You have uh, to have a bottom line with all the options. I see chat, no chat, share screen. Okay, multiple participants can share simultaneously. Okay, try now uh, share your screen, uh, Maria. Okay, it works now. Okay, fantastic. So I have started with him uh, just, uh, just a moment. I have started with him working on different projects. I have started uh, very badly uh, with uh, stuff, you know, uh, very lost in what was drawings. I, I started just copying some types of um, images online. Then I started drawing mm -hmm. and uh, I made different, uh, like, um, uh, you know, uh, different types of drawings. In fact, I have uh, launched myself in different uh, styles, sometimes just uh, seeing what others do and trying to make the style for simple things like poetry and, you know, uh, language created things for kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I have uh, mounted my just a moment portfolio with very, very different styles of drawings. Uh, just I was totally lost. I'm still lost. And uh, I do different experiments and it is just me not finding my own style until um, now. And uh, it is basically too much. Uh, it is uh, like a huge world of drawings out there in different styles. And uh, I still didn't, um, I cannot cope with finding my, you know, the um, exact style I'm willing to do. Mm. And lately, uh, if you see here, this is the project I'm building with him uh, because the company is now on. Uh, I have started with uh, Generatify working and poetry as well. And uh, I'm just willing to know uh, how I can combine um, his ideas and build it in publishing, basically educational projects for kids and for young adults. So you so are looking. So, so you're looking to publish both your son's books and yours, or are you more focused on his books? I'm on his books. So I, uh, in reality, I do you know the training, I do the poetry, I do the things for now. But it mm -hmm. is a teaching process. So we are both together, and uh, he gives me uh, his insights. So mm -hmm. he gives me the idea. I work around the idea, and then we search the means to achieve it. And basically. Uh, for example, we have uh, this project here, it was for his school, you know, and uh, I convert his things, things he writes or things he's interested in, uh, small projects, educative projects he can share with his classmates. Mm -hmm. And uh, since uh, kids uh, grow, they change their focus. And right now we have changed with artificial intelligence. He is very much interested in it. But even if so, I want to uh, somehow uh, teach him uh, how to draw, and uh, I want him to be able to draw in his own style. And uh, because I'm very versatile, you know, I uh, just am totally lost. Art is not my thing. I draw because it is something I was willing to share with my kids, uh, but uh, it is not just what I do. And uh, right now I want to focus on how I can convert this in something more streamlined, you know, I see that you have projects, you have them uh, with the project from start to end, you know, and you have basically uh, made um, a line for your art and mm -hmm. uh, you can uh, you can sell it. So mm -hmm. this is this is the, the final goal for me, uh, teach him how uh, to serve other people and uh, not just draw, but draw for projects and uh, be useful in a way hmm. drawing drawing for a purpose <laughs> yeah this is this is what i 
what I really want. Fantastic. So you can actually, first of all, thank you for sharing. You can actually share our home assignments with your son and you both can do those assignments. I think that's something you guys can be joining, uh, doing together, which I think you both can enjoy a lot. Thank you very much, Baruch. Oh, thank you, Maria. All right, Rafael, uh, the stage is yours. Please tell us a little bit about yourself, about your background and what is here you are looking to accomplish from this class. Yeah, um, I'm uh, presently I'm an animator. Uh, I work in uh, Quebec City, and um, I work for a company that uh, develop uh, Canadian intellectual property for uh, young people. Mm -hmm. um, and my my goal with this training is to um, understand and uh, find how to um, create character um, and present them uh, to the uh, various investor or to oh. build a story with a few images and uh, uh, convince investor that my project is good. And uh, I, I want a better understand of um, um, how to develop uh, character and visual uh, storytelling for your own market. Mm. That's beautiful. Do you have uh, something you want to share with us? Do, do you want to share anything on your screen, something from your work? We'd love to see uh, some of your work uh no not now but uh, the next time okay i will prepare okay. some time uh, something for, for for that okay fantastic so you're looking to develop your own uh, basically pitch that you want to pitch to investors uh, uh, with the goal of translating that into animation or uh, you want to start with books or you want to do both um i want just to to make character for a transmedia mm -hmm. beautiful excellent wonderful so thank you guys for everybody for sharing. Let me go back to my uh, screen sharing and we can continue. Okay. By the way, anyone has any questions so far? Anybody have something you want to ask and something not clear? No questions. Okay, fantastic. So let's uh, dive deeper into what it takes, uh, what are the fundamentals of creating iconic characters, uh, characters that they touch people's hearts through humor, emotion, and relatedness. So I actually uh, indicated here uh, three very important things into uh, what it takes to create those characters. The first thing is to touch people's hearts, which means uh, there is, you evoke a certain emotion when you, uh, when you create characters. And we're gonna uh, explore different examples that uh, uh, of authors that were very very successful in doing that. And uh, as you can see, the example I'm showing here is of Dr. Seuss, and there are other examples of other authors and artists. And they are very different than what we see today in media. Because I think, uh, kind of, if we kind of reflect what's going on with the world right now, in terms of artistically, there's a lot. There's the rise of uh, uh, you know artificial intelligence. And uh, just kind of as a side discussion into artificial intelligence, which I think is a wonderful tool. Uh, you know, when you create art, you, I, I personally use a lot of references. So sometimes I like to use photo references, how a certain thing will look like. So artificial intelligence allows us to basically to uh, command our own references. Uh, uh, if, you, if you will, you basically, you say, you, you give the, the, the program a command, okay, I would like to create an image of such and such, and the computer is basically generating for you whatever you're looking for. I think in terms of reference is wonderful. That's it. And uh, very important to know that artificial intelligence cannot replace our creativity. We do need to put the work into exploring ideas. And even if we think that the computer is going to do it for us, I think at the end of the day, we're going to feel a little bit uh, limited and handicapped if we feel that the computer is doing the work for us. So I think uh, when we use artificial intelligence, it's a wonderful tool for references, but uh, it's not going to replace our own ability of uh, creating things, okay? So this is very important. So let's start with the Dr. Seuss, which is, uh, for me, is, uh, he's my own, uh, he's my hero. Since I was a child, I really, really love his art. and. Uh, I think he's the most successful children's author in the United States, if not in the world. You know, he's published more than 60 books and his career span uh, of over 60 years doing not just children's books, but also 
he worked for the military during World War II, and he was doing he was directing and writing uh, different content uh, during during the war. But nevertheless, uh, Dr. Seuss he's an example of a very very iconic uh, artist and a storyteller. I mean, he captured me immediately when I was a child because I've never seen anyone who's kind of creating art in such a way. Uh, the, the amount of humor and expression is in his character was for me, was very, very uh, inspiring. I was v totally blown away. And the other thing that I was captured by uh, Dr. Seuss, he's, uh, the way he uses rhymes. I also use rhymes in my books. The reason I love rhymes is because rhymes are, they give you some kind of, uh, they create a rhythm, kind of almost like music. So it's like when you read rhymes, you kind of go into a mode, like almost you're listening to music. So I think that was another thing that was very captivating for me as a child. So here on the screen, you can see the original artwork that Dr. Seuss created for uh, the cat in the hat and how it was uh, translated into the big screen, in this case, uh, with Mike Myers from uh, uh, many, many other films that is a very, uh, very well-known comedian, which we cannot actually recognize him because of all the makeup. But this is a great example how uh, a, a children's book is translated into the big screen uh, here in, in those samples. Another book uh, that we have uh, created by uh, Dr. Seuss is Horton Hears a Who. Uh, this actually is one of my, this is a, the, the next sample we're going to be covering, uh, The Lorax, are two, uh, some of my most fam uh, favorite animated films based on children's books because the way they treated uh, on the big screen, those 2D uh, renderings of Dr. Seuss from pen and ink into the big screen is absolutely mind blowing. It's so, it's so beautiful. Uh, just kind of going back, uh, reflecting on the themes that uh, Dr. Seuss is covering, because I think the themes are very, very important. It tells a story visually, the character needs to basically to serve, and we're going to go deeper into that in the next class, how you visually, uh, how your character serve uh, the theme. But if we go into themes of uh, Dr. Seuss books, starting with, uh, again, Cat in the Hat. Cat in the Hat is basically a story of uh, a mischievous cat that appears one day in the, in the home of uh, a brother and sister. And he basically uh, creates a whole havoc in their house. And then they put everything back into order, but they go into a bunch of adventures. So the themes that Dr. Seuss covers in, his, uh, in this book is uh, trust. So uh, the cat reassures the children that what he's doing is okay. And uh, their mother is not going to find out what they're doing. So then uh, we can start, you can ask her different questions like, would you have to trust the cat? Uh, different things like that. When the cat, uh, uh, so the cat appears as a stranger. Can you, tr can you trust strangers? What if this stranger is a teacher or a policeman? How do you know if you can trust your friends? And what is trust? So these are very, very important themes that Dr. Seuss uh, translates. I'm going to go back to the previous slide. He translates uh, in his books with his really uh, mind-blowing uh, ability to express that, uh, not just through writing, but also through images. And uh, as you can see with Dr. Seuss, uh, it's very minimalistic many, many times. Uh, you know, the characters are very well drawn, but uh, it's very graphically, it's very minimalist. Like you can see, uh, like in this uh, image, for example, we have a major event or major uh, action in this page. We have the text and we have some accompanying visuals and basically everything is blank. So it's very, uh, it's very well balanced the way Dr. Seuss translates his ideas uh, in his style. And some artists are, have different approaches, but I think Dr. Seuss is a really great example of very graphic approach, how you can basically uh, combine visuals and texts. Uh, another another thing that Dr. Seuss uh, uh, kind of uh, explores in this book is responsibility. Uh, like the cat with all his games made quite a mess in his in these two kids' house. So we have some question like, is it okay that the cat made a mess? So is it okay to invite somebody into our life so that they can create havoc? So things like that. So I think when you create a children's book uh, and you uh, you can invite the viewers to ask questions, you're actually doing a very very good job. We're not just here, uh, at least from my approach, just to spoon feed our viewers or readers just with a story. 
and just to entertain them for the duration of the time they're, re they're reading the book. But uh, it's really about engaging in some kind of uh, uh, interaction with the viewers. You evoke some very, very important questions. So I would like to ask you this point from your experience. Uh, we're going to start with you, Laura. We're gonna just going to go by order. Laura, from your experience reading children's book uh, from since you were a child or until adulthood, what kind of themes you found that were very appealing to you, uh, or maybe you didn't find it, now you find certain themes that are appealing for you. We'd love to hear from you, Laura. Um, <clears throat> could you say the question one more time? Yeah, the question is, uh, throughout your life so far, reading children's books, what were the themes that you were uh, captured? What, what, are, what kind of themes you found that are important? And if you did not find themes, what kind of themes you are looking to cover in your uh, storytelling? So I think you and I talked for quite a while about, you know, the, um, I have a, a spiritual bent or a shamanic bent. And mm -hmm. I think really getting across to young people that there's more um, than, you know, technology, there's more than, um, you know, the, the, the old school training of what mm -hmm. they're being told that they need to do and where they need to go in their life. So I, I just want to introduce, you know, more of a ethereal world, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but there's more, you know, I hate the word moral, but there's, there's certain things that I feel like kids don't get when they're growing up. And I feel like mm -hmm. books is one of the best ways that they can start to identify with their identity of who they really are. I guess that's a good way to put it. It's beautiful. Uh, yes, we did talk in the before the class, but it's, I'm very glad that you're actually sharing that with the other students and those who are going to be watching the recording because what each and every one of you bring into this class is very unique. So it's very, very important that you guys sharing those things. It's absolutely mind-blowing and very inspiring. Like, for example, in your case, Laura, uh, introducing shamanic uh, traditions uh, through, to children through books, it's, it's a very, very... A incredibly unique and a very beautiful theme to introduce through shamanic traditions. So, uh, you know, there are many, many different traditions in shamanism. And is there any particular uh, shamanic uh, tradition that you, you find more important than the other, the one you want to start with in your, in your first uh, book that you want to create? <clears throat> well, I actually have found a underlying theme between all shamanic traditions whether it's celtic or native american or you know even islamic or jewish or whatever the you know whatever it is there's an underlying theme of there's something greater you know than our our smaller identity our smaller self so i think mm -hmm. what i'm trying to what i'm trying to say is that there's a lot of the kids that are being born today are incredibly wise old souls and they need material that's going to be rich and deep and help them to grow quickly in a world that's changing so quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, they, they need tools. Absolutely. And I, and I think it's very, it's beautiful that you're attuned to what's going on in the world. Like we know the term indigo children that were born previously. And I know I'm not sure which which is the correct term to the children are born these days, but obviously there are some souls that are very very advanced, and you are want to cater to the, that particular uh, de demographic group, which I think it's it's beautiful. You're not just creating stories that are interesting you, but you are actually catering to a certain audience, which is it's very very unique. It's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, what about you, Maria? Please tell us about what kind of themes you are looking uh, to uh, talk about in your books. So I'm going to share because I have done some things uh, right now. So as I have mentioned, uh, it is all about my kids' uh, vision. Mm -hmm. So we are going uh, through robotic and intelligent systems and networks, which is uh, oriented at uh, human uh, and uh, animal life capabilities when we have the chance to somehow in brackets augment those. And we work with uh, the different uh, cultural and uh, historical values we have throughout uh, 
societies, not only uh, what is mm -hmm. Europe and uh, the United States, but also worldwide. And so uh, we develop those into animals and uh, into different types of uh, subjects uh, that uh, tell a story also in rhyme. As you can see, we work with poetry. Um, oh, no, we don't, I don't see your screen, uh, no? uh, Maria. No, I see the lion image, but uh, you're not sharing a screen right now. We cannot see Okay, your... so I will try again because yes, here it is sharing. Uh -uh. Just a moment, I probably will have to stop sharing and then share again because it is not working for some reason. Let me let me stop my sharing. Okay. I okay. Give, okay, now we see. I'm sorry. Okay. I apologize. Please, yes, continue. Okay, so we work so as a So this, uh, this mm -hmm. yeah. yes, please go ahead. Please go ahead. This is the first thing that I have shown. So it goes about my son is Mars, by the way. And uh, so he's totally uh, a fan of our abilities to sometimes uh, go outside of what we call Earth or home. Uh -huh. And we are sending all the animals and all the things we can see to his uh, favorite planet. And we do, uh, by the way, uh, educational materials for uh, children at um, different uh, stages of their development, explaining cultural and things, values that we have uh, throughout society, as I have mentioned, but they all go with this uh, extra planetary uh, suites you know it is like also cosmic and robotic and they have all types of gadgets i cannot show everything because i have not prepared okay. but as you see they go just uh, they do space exploration and they uh, befriend robots and uh, animals can speak and we revive animals as well and it goes uh, with poetry. It is always accompanied with poetry. As you have mentioned, we need the rhythm and kids remember things with the rhythm much better. Mm -hmm. So this is what I want to continue doing, you know, and um, I want just to mix up all types of species and uh, make uh, people understand that we are not the only intelli intelligent life on earth and that we have to you know, uh, just change habits and start respecting everything we have been given to uh, cohabit with. Yeah, sounds like you really want to use the, uh, the storytelling you're creating with your son to inspire people to see the bigger picture, a cosmic, a more cosmic picture of our existence. Yes, right. To see us as a tiny uh, place uh, of a much bigger system. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Maria. Uh, yeah. What about you, Rafael? What kind of themes you are looking to uh, explore with your characters? Um, uh, I do not uh, do a theme. Uh, I would like to uh, design a project for uh, for uh, of a character for uh, augmented reality project for children uh, who are uh, going to visit a museum on the story. A character who uh, accompany them and give uh, additional informations. I need to to talk. Uh, I need to think about it to create a character um, for them. For so kind these of. Are, so these are these are going to be characters for augmented reality, part of a museum. You said. Yes. So th this is an existing museum that already it's it's yes, existing. It's an existing museum. Okay, so uh, what kind of uh, things they show in this museum? So maybe we can then kind of wow. get an idea of the themes. Like, is it a, a far history? Like, is it a modern history? What kind of history? Uh, history of the village around this place. Our, uh, our people lived uh, there um, about a, a century. Okay, so you're talking about a, a local history where you live in Canada? Yes. Okay, so is there like a native, uh, is there native, uh, is a part of it is the history of the na local natives that live there, like the local Indians? Um, yes, but uh, all, all the people, uh, Canadian French, uh, uh, Canadian, uh, all the, um, um, Old professions. 
Mm -hmm. So basically you want to create characters that will show how different people from different kinds can live together. Is that something you can uh, maybe talk about? Uh, like how we can create, live in unity coming from different backgrounds. Is that a theme that you think it can be uh, exploring? Yes. Wonderful. I'm just asking those questions because I think these questions will be very helpful for you in finding uh, what, how you're going to approach characters because you know, the design of the character, how we visualize the character needs to convey a theme. It needs to convey what message we would like to convey to our audiences. So the more we ask those questions, and I invite you, all of you guys to ask, ask those questions throughout the class will be very helpful for us as a vehicle to kind of fine tune our vision. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So let me go back to my screen. Let's continue. Thank you guys for sharing. I really appreciate that. So again, we talked about uh, themes, uh, uh, some of the themes that Dr. Seuss has uh, been covering in his book, uh, Cat in the Hat. Then we have uh, Horton Here's a Who. It's about trust and about uh, 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 how uh, in Horton, he's, excuse me, in Horton Here's a Who, is about an elephant who hears a certain uh, certain uh, creature, and nobody uh, believes him that he hears those those creatures, and you have to convince others in his uh, jungle that he can hear those creatures. So it's about being uh, persistent, and to, it's about uh, you know following uh, what you know inside is true, which I think in our society this war in this uh, day and time in history, sometimes we've been challenged about what we know inside is true. And we've been challenged by, uh, by society, whether we're doing the right thing or not, or should we follow the herd? So if you know me a little bit and you've seen my work, I'm definitely uh, uh, something, this is extremely important to me, is to listen to your own voice and find is what is that voice telling you and to follow it with persistency, just in the uh, Horton hears a who. Uh, and here in the in the Lorax, uh, a very uh, timely theme of, uh, of basically preservation of the environment. You know, we, we live in a world that, uh, you know, some claim that we are depleting a lot of natural resources, in this case, trees. So Dr. Seuss is telling us a very vivid and very colorful tale using uh, those really beautiful characters. And I think it's really wonderful how it's been translated from his simple pen and ink drawing into 3D. And uh, I think it gives us a, really an opportunity to visualize things in advance. And again, if you have uh, somebody who can do 3D renderings for you and you can uh, you know, create them for the class or you do 3D rendering, and that's wonderful. And you can express them in the class. Rafael, you missed the, uh, the beginning of the class. And I what I was talking about is, um, just kind of uh, recap for you. We're not. This class is not about you know the digital learning digital uh, techniques. Although uh, anybody who has those uh, skills is is welcome and it's beautiful. But we're going to be exploring a lot, a lot, a lot of drawing. So and so, I hope you uh, feel comfortable with drawing. Do you feel comfortable drawing, Rafael? Hello, Rafael. Yes, yes, I'm very I'm comfortable. Yes, very, yeah, no problem for that. Well, wonderful, excellent. So here we can see uh, how beautiful it, they translated the 2D designs of Dr. Seuss into 3D renderings of uh, the Lorax. And again, in Grinch, uh, who stole Christmas. And what I like about uh, this particular book and movie is like how we take uh, what we call a sacred cow, a cultural sacred cow, such as Christmas, and we create, we bring about this mischievous character who kind of uh, steals from us something that was beloved by so many people, and going on to those colorful adventures of uh, something very iconic. I think it's uh, what I like about Dr. Seuss. Again, you can see that I'm a big fan of his work. There are a lot of daring ideas, and I want you to guys also be daring in your approach, whether you already have story that you've written or you're uh, exploring stories i want you to really be daring and uh, i think there's a lot of uh, kind of standards in our society especially now we live in what we call the woke mentality uh, which is you know what is politically correct so we're not here to be politically correct guys so i don't want you to feel obliged to follow a certain you know you know i'm not i don't want to touch this subject matter because i think it's going to upset people 
you know, sometimes we need to a little bit shake the boat, so to speak, especially we live in, in times that the que- uh, a lot of things are being questioned, like our identities are being questioned and children are born into environments that are make them question their own identity. So I think that for you being daring in your approach uh, with what you'll be creating is very, very welcome and it's very, very blessed. So I would like to encourage you to do follow that mindset. The Little Prince. Anybody here not familiar with The Little Prince? Everybody familiar with that? Yeah, yeah? okay. Yeah. How about you, Rafael? Are you familiar with the Le Petit Prince? Yes, I know, I know. I read it uh, many times. Wonderful. <laughs> so The Little Prince is absolutely one of the most treasured uh, children's books that is actually not just for children, but I was personally exposed. I read that when I was a child and it blew my mind. And what's really unique about The Little Prince is actually that it's very minimalistic. The artwork is very, very, very simple. But and not to say that you have to create something very simple or doesn't mean you cannot create something simple. But uh, in, that, in this case, uh, The Little Prince is a, a wonderful example how such minimalistic approach serves a very, very deep and very multi-layered story. You know, it's a story, uh, since you, Mar- uh, Maria, you mentioned you want to create stories that inspire the viewers or the readers to have a more cosmic uh, mindset, to see that there are much, much uh, bigger things in the universe. So the little prince is also is touching on that theme in the book. You know, he lives on, the, on his own little planet, which presents how we all live in our own little world. And he embarks on a journey and he goes, he visits many, many other planets, including Earth, he goes visit Earth. So he's kind of, uh, we are introducing the viewers into a cosmic mindset from a kind of an opposite view from somebody who's coming from out of, the, uh, out of this world. But there are many, many other themes that the, the author is covering in his book, such as how uh, authentic we are when we become adults. Uh, are we, do we become jaded? Or do we uh, maintain our childhood dreams? Do we live our childhood dreams? So some very, very uh, existential and very deep questions. And uh, again, you don't, I'm not saying you have to kind of uh, address such themes in your book, but I think having uh, depth in your, in your uh, space is something that I appreciate, appreciate a lot. Again, my approach to children's uh, publishing is you're not just targeting children, you're also tar- targeting those inner children within the adults that are going to be uh, reading your uh, books or watching your cartoons or whatever you're going to be creating. So working on those two levels is highly, highly recommended. So again, another great example of uh, Curious George, which is a much more, a much younger audience. It does not necessarily address very deep uh, themes it's more about uh, curiosity discovering the world uh, with some <coughs> adult supervision <laughs> but uh, it's a great example of again uh, of, of a really lovely children's book and uh, a character that has been translated uh, into a very successful franchise and you can see again a great example how the 2d uh, original artwork <coughs> that we created by uh, this uh, lovely couple the Hayes into uh, this beautiful children's book, had how this has been translated into the big screen. So it's a great example of that kind of uh, cross-platform uh, process. Now we talk about another beautiful, this is really a mega, mega franchise, uh, How to Train Your Dragon. Uh, again, the, the original book is not even close to uh, in terms of on, on the artistic level. I think it has even uh, illustrations, but uh, even on the cover and the artwork you see, it's completely different from what we see in the DreamWorks animation, which turned into a mega franchise. I think they have uh, three, three animated films. And I think they're working on the fourth one, uh, really expanding the world. And I think this is really the, this and Dr. Seuss are really a, a really incredible example how a children's book is growing into a mega, mega franchise. This is really something that is absolutely admirable. And again, something that I spoke about at the beginning of the class, Rafael, you missed. This, uh, the very important part of our class is cultivating the mindset. Uh, because uh, each and every one of you who joined this class, you have big visions and big dreams, which I absolutely admire and I appreciate because I want you to think yourself as a multi-dimensional 
creator. You are creating things in a multi-dimensional level. So whatever you are going to be creating this class, you thinking already how it's going to translate into a potential franchise, animation, toys. And they, these are great examples that we're going to be covering. So this is the kind of the mindset we're uh, here to, uh, to accomplish in this class. So those examples are absolutely very, very inspiring and very, very uh, empowering for us as creators. Where the wild things are. Anybody here not familiar with the book? Everybody familiar? Yep. Yeah, wonderful. My uh, favorite book. Absolutely, mine too. Unfortunately, Spike Jones, uh, you know, the translation to the big screen, I don't think it was very successful. However, the fact that a book has been translated to the big screen, this is uh, something which is very admirable. The book itself is absolutely mind blowing. It talks about themes of, uh, you know, how you again, how we tame our inner demons or our inner beasts, which in, uh, Maurice Sandex, Sandex did such a great work uh, expressing those uh, creatures that represent our own, our own kind of dem uh, demons or our own monsters within and how we go into an adventure exploring our own inner uh, wildness, so to speak. It's again, he's using such a beautiful way to depict in an allegor allegorical way such really deep and very compelling themes. So I think this is, a, again, again, one of my most favorite children's books. And again, the reason I brought this, not just because I love it, but also look at the iconic way, the way Maurice Sandek illustrates his work. It's such, you know, when you look at his artwork, it's very different from Dr. Seuss, very different from uh, Exupéry and other books. This is a great example of somebody who's really found his own voice and this is uh, the reason. This is the reason I'm showing that to you, because I would like to see how you express your own uniqueness. This is really for me super, super important in this class. What is the vision that you would like to fine tune and to express your ideas? So this is a really beautiful example. Now let's talk about a little bit about beyond children's books. I, I on the screen we can see some really beautiful examples of merchandising from those different. Uh, uh, books that I've been discussing, we can see toys of uh, Curious George, the toys, action figures from the Little Prince, uh, Dr. Seuss, again, the uh, Little Prince, Paddington, uh, we have more Little Prince, Dr. Seuss, well, the wild, thi well, the wild things are, which is really beautiful series of uh, action figures and toys. And then we also see here, uh, uh, how to train your dragon. What I mentioned at the beginning of the class, again, I'm kind of recapping for Raphael. Uh, I was showing, uh, I'm just going to, for the sake of uh, uh, just kind of to review for Raphael, I was showing it before how I was drawing sculptures for uh, my pitch when I was pitching my vision for the wind, the willows. I'm just, I was showing this for Raphael. These are sculptures I created and the sake of just enjoying and how you can uh, use that as another vehicle to express yourself whether you have experience in sculpting or not it doesn't matter but i just encouraging all of you guys to uh, jump into this medium and actually this is the one of the reason i was able to sell this property to disney within 20 minutes because they could see the action figures because when you go into a studio and you pitch them a, a film or animation they don't, they always think in this kind of mindset. They already think how they can translate their property into merchandise, into a mega franchise. So if you're Raphael, you're going to pitch your uh, characters into investors, it's going to be very helpful for you to create 3D models, whether you're going to sculpt them or maybe you do 3D printing. But this is a very, very helpful uh, uh, tool in your presentation, uh, whether you are presenting to investors or whether you're planning your own uh, uh, franchise or IP, how it's going to translate into toys. So this is absolutely really integral part of the process and actually very, very fun, whatever, uh, whatever your project is. So sculpting and the 3D expressions. So let's continue. Anybody have questions so far? Any comments, any observations you would like to share? Yes, I do. Yes, please, Laura, go ahead. Okay, so <clears throat> I think each of us, um, well, I'll just speak for myself. I have, I have a question about, I, I understand what you're, 
<clears throat> your theme, like each theme, each week is, has a theme, right? So, so yeah. okay. So are you, would you say that your focus is a lot on marketing what we already have or developing and fine tuning what we do, or is it kind of a combination of getting it all together? Because, you know, mine is, mine is in many pieces. I feel scattered. Mm-hmm. So I'm just kind of curious, how are you going to help us to read you on our own? A, yeah. No, this is actually wonderful. It's a very important question what you ask, Laura, because I do, I'm, I'm here to help you to fine tune your vision. I'm not here to uh, give you a marketing ideas, uh, although I welcome your ideas for marketing. It's not about marketing, but uh, when, you, when you say you have a lot of different pieces, you mean you have different uh, ideas or you have... Uh, one idea that is broken to many pieces can you please no i mean i've already written I'm, i've written about half of the children's book and i've done about i'd say four or five paintings and i don't know how like i do need some advice on how do you take like a painting or a you know i'm also a ceramicist so mm -hmm. how do we take those things and put them into the you know how do we put it bring it all together is kind of what that's part of why i'm taking your class so i hope that i hope that you will cover that <laughs> I absolutely, I will cover that in the, I would like to answer a question when I'm showing those examples of how children's books are translated into different avenues like merchandising, toys, animation, etc. Since you have ceramics background, more of your characters and turn them into three dimensional objects. Because when you have those things translated into 3D, that helps you to also visualize how that is how that is going to translate into other mediums, if that makes sense. Yes. Or so in so I guess what I'm trying to understand is like I'm not I'm not a um, you know professional animator illustrator. Like this is all I'm at the beginning stages. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to understand is are you recommending that we put things into th three dimensional? Because I'm also a three dimensional artist. So I'm just trying to understand like what are next steps? Like what are you'll probably be delivering this, but I just wanted to let you know that that's, I have, I'm a little ADHD, so I have a little trouble bringing it all together. So if you have any suggestions on that, I'm open to hearing. Well, first of all, you're going to have uh, home assignments, which I'm gonna cover at the end of the class. So uh, during those home assignments, that will help you to fine tune and gain experience uh, doing certain exercises, which I'm going to give you, that's one thing. Now, in terms of the 3D, I do encourage you, like I said at the beginning of the class, I do encourage you to explore different mediums because the more mediums you expose yourself and you have experience, the more variety of ways you can present your project. So whether you're going to meet, uh, like Rafael is going to meet investors, maybe you're going to meet investor, or maybe you're going to meet a publisher, or maybe you're going to do it on your own. So let's say you decide to launch uh, your first book, you decide to do it on your own. So you're gonna have at your disposal a very wide array of tools expressing yourself. So when you present your, your first book, which you're gonna talk about shamanic themes, then you can present to people how the characters translate into other avenues. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes, so I'm, I'm very clueless about marketing, but yes. I am very good at the art, the poetry, the writing and the music, you know, like I don't, I've got the art down. I just don't have the, you know, how to bring it into the world is where I'm stuck. Okay, so uh, I think I can answer your questions. The, way, the best way to bring things to the world right now, we have internet. So you can present, <laughs> you know, you can, uh, you know, you can create a website where you can present your I project. See. Okay. If you, if you do, uh, you know, you create a website, you, you, you on your website, you can uh, post, a, a link to buy your books if you decide to sell 3d things may let's say you find a way to do uh, molds to to do mass production of uh, some of your characters you can sell physical objects so there's many ways you can approach them and uh, we're going to be communicating also through email so if you have specific questions you can also ask me and i will give you feedback based on ideas you're exploring that and that also relates to everybody else if you have any particular question because i don't want to deal with the particular uh, things uh, for the sake of the class. But if you have very specific questions for your project, please uh, address them to me and I will give you uh, my uh, feedback and the guidance and we'll answer whatever I can. Does that make sense? Thank you. Yeah, that's very okay. helpful. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Excellent.
So let's move forward. Uh, we have half an hour left, so I want to leave some more room because we have a couple of exercises. So again, when we talk about uh, going beyond children's books, uh, we're going to cover uh, in this class the avenues of toys, film and animation, NFTs, merchandise, TV and web, theme parks, books, and games. Now, it doesn't mean that you have to think about those things, but uh, I'm showing them for you as options. Because let's say uh, you guys have more than one idea for uh, your first project. Let's say you have a few different ideas. And I think when you consider ideas, one of the things I suggest you to, I invite you to look at how, how can this project translate into more than one avenue? This is kind of the, the kind of the consideration I would like you to think about. Obviously, you want to address uh, universal themes. You want to appeal to as many people as possible. You know, like Raphael, you're working on a project of a museum and uh, that you're going to be working, which is very local to your geographic location. But I would assume that your museum will also have online presence and the people are going to be able to like you say, going to a, not just augmented reality, but maybe there's going to be an option of a metaverse uh, capability. Is that something you go, you're considering as well? NFT and uh, metaverse, yes, it's considered. Absolutely. So this is, a, I, I, I like that you're already thinking that in that direction, because when you're going to be creating projects, you want to see how uh, those projects translate into those things. Because the more avenues you're thinking about, they can you can strategize in advance how you're going to present it to the world. So in your case, it's NFTs and metaverse, and maybe for others, there's going to be a combination of more or less. So this is another something for you to think about. Again, when you begin this pro this class, this six weeks journey with this mindset, you you will find yourself having a much wider perspective of things. And this is exactly what I want you to have. You're not here just to, again, tell a, a children's book, tell a story. You are here to really uh, have a big vessel, uh, so to speak. You're here to think very big. You're in many ways thinking as an ent entrepreneur in this class. You're thinking about very big things and very uh, wide uh, array of subject matters, not just from a creative point of view, but also from a business point of view. So I think it's a, it's a great opportunity for all of you to expand in this class. So let's say, let's look at some examples of uh, some uh, children's books that are basically based on a, on a single subject. Like uh, this is again, a really brilliant and beautiful children's book uh, called The Giving Tree. It's not necessarily a great example how we translate into a merchandise against other things. Um, although it can be translated into a, a short and beautiful animation. But what I like about this example is how the author is basically uh, taking a simple thing like a tree, how you can create a story from a single object. So uh, a poignant picture book about love and acceptance. Cherished for over 50 years, this classic is perfect for both young readers and lifelong fans. So begins a story of unforgettable perception, beautifully written and illustrated by the gifted and versatile Shel Silverstein. This moving parable for all ages offers a touching interpretation of the gift of giving and a serene acceptance of another capacity to love in return. So like what the author is using here uh, by choosing a tree, you cre he creates a context. You know, you can take any object as we want to see further in other examples and to see what kind of context you're associating to the tree. So in this case, it's about giving the association because tree uh, bear fruits. The tree creates shade. The tree has roots. And how you can use each and every one of those uh, elements to the advantage of your story. And there, you know, you can, in this case, the tree is not a, a very graphic visual character like you would see like the Groot in uh, 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 the galaxy. What's the name of the film? Uh, uh, I forgot the name. Do you, do you guys remember it? You know, you, you know what I'm talking, which I'm talking about the Groot from uh, uh, the series of, uh, based on the comic book about the, uh, I forgot the name with the galaxy. You, you know what I'm talking about? Anybody here not familiar with it? Mm. Familiar with it? I am Groot. No, the Groot. Yeah. Uh, what's the name of it? What with the galaxy? I forgot the name. Uh, one second. The Guardian of the Galaxy? 
Guardians of the Galaxy. Thank you, Raphael. Yes. <laughs> so the Groot is also is a character of a tree in the Guardians of the Galaxy, but he's actually he's more humanized. He has uh, he have eyes. He has a personality. He walks around. He's basically a walking tree. So it's a very different approach, like from what Shell Silverstein does here. Actually, the the tree is more uh, represented by attributes, not by actually a visual. Uh, a visualization of a tree is a creature with eyes and nose, etc. So that's a very, very unique, but nevertheless, he conveys in a most beautiful and deep way some very deep ideas of friendship, what it means to give, etc. Another great example is how you can take a single object, turn it into a character, is a sunflower seed. It's a very successful children's book called The Bad Seed by uh, uh, Rory John. This is a book about the bad seed. And the, it's a it's a, a bad seed with a temper. It has bad manners and it has a bad it has an attitude, and he's been bad since he remembered him himself. It's a very funny and very touching tale that reminds us of the remarkably transformative power of will, acceptance, and just being you. So, this is a very brilliant way to portray a character. When you take you know when you buy sunflower seeds, they all look the same. It's basically how you can find a, an identity being something that resembles everybody else but still you can find uniqueness in a world of uh, lack of uniqueness so this is a great example how uh, the choice of the theme of the book itself serves here a very very deep and very compelling purpose and he has actually book another book about a potato and the other objects basically a single object that tells a, a whole story through uh, interaction with others and relatedness but nevertheless conveys very deep human attributes. And here a book about carrots. Again, it's about, uh, it's uh, Jasper the rabbit loves carrots, especially uh, cracking hopper filled carrots. He eats them on the way to school. He eats them going to little league. He eats them walking home until the day the carrot starts following him or are they? This hilarious picture book shows it's all fun and games until you got too greedy. So it's again, how you can take a single object like a vegetable, a carrot, and create a whole uh, beautiful story. Rabbits, they like carrots. So you tie in another character. It's not, a, could be a sidekick or it could be a different uh, kind of association. But basically, you're taking a, an association of an object and you expand it to a whole world from, you know, in this case, from a carrot uh, to bunnies. Or if, it, if that was, uh, you know, uh, another vegetable or another uh, a type of food, you can expect that to other, uh, another uh, a whole in, entire universe. So that's a, a great example how that has been handled. So now we're going to do an exercise. So everybody, you guys, everybody have a, a, a pencil or a pen and a paper. Everybody have that, right? Okay. Yes. Yes. So what, what yeah. we're going to do, we're going to do a really quick and really fun exercise. We're going to, this is a, how to get quick inspiration and get the creative juices flowing. We're going to do an exercise. You're going to, you see on the left side here, an adjective, happy, proud, angry, lazy, gloomy, scared, and curious. On the right, you see an object, turnip, shoe, flower, pencil, box, and lamp. What I want you is to choose one item from the left and one item from the right. And I want you to draw, uh, to draw the character and embody those qualities. So that's going to be the first thing you want to choose. It doesn't have to be like, if it's a happy turnip, it can be happy box or it can be lazy. It doesn't matter what the combination, but I want you to choose one adjective and one object. And I want you to draw it uh, on a piece of paper, expressing, uh, expressing uh, this objective. Is that uh, everybody are clear what we need to do right now? Yes. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to give you a few minutes. So uh, go ahead and I'll be right back.
Do you guys need some more time or are you done? How many do you want us to do? Just do one. I want you to oh, okay. just do one character. Everybody, everybody drew at least one character. Uh, yes, but fast. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. What about you? What about you, Maria? Do you need more time? I have just a sketch. Okay, fantastic. So I would like you to share on the screen what you drew, and I want to just give us a very quick overview of what you did. Let me turn off my share, my screen. Actually, you can just show it, uh, not screen sharing, just put it in front of the camera if you can to share with us what you just drew. Let's start, uh, let's start with you, Laura. Can you share what you drew? Okay, <clears throat> it's a quick one. Yeah, that's fine, that's fine. Please okay, share. so I'm just trying to see how to, how to see everybody. Okay, well, can you see me? Yeah, yeah, if you can just get it a little bit closer, a little bit lower so we can see it. Uh, uh, if you can move it a little bit so we can see what you drew. <laughs> I'm trying to find where the gallery is so I can see. So what, what did you what did you draw? What's the object uh, what the object you drew? Can you see it? Uh, now we can now we can see it. Okay, so I drew gloomy turnip and proud shoe. Okay. Can you see it? No, we don't see it. We cannot see your drawing uh, now. Okay, hold on. How about now? Yes, if you can turn it uh, uh, sideways. Turn it a little bit. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how to do the gallery. That's why I don't... You can just... Yeah. Okay, now we can see. So that's a turnip, and what's the other one? Uh, it says gloomy turnip and proud shoe. Excellent. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Okay, Rafael, can you share with us what you drew? Uh, yes. Just a second. Um... Do you see me? I see you. Yes. Oh, okay. 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 I'm you. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't see me. I don't know. Uh, it's okay. Yes, get a little bit closer to the camera so we can see. So what did you draw? Uh, okay. um, a lazy pencil. Lazy pencil, beautiful. I love it. <laughs> That's fantastic. Excellent. What about you, uh, Maria? Let's see. We cannot hear you, Maria. Just a second, I, I'm searching for my video options okay. because I, I lost them. Side by side. Okay. I don't know whether I am. It's, on it's the very screen. it's very blurry. We cannot see if you can. From some reason, it's very blurry. I can, we cannot see what you're showing. From some reason, I don't know why it's so blurry. I can see your face very sharp, but from some reason, the camera is showing your uh, sketch is very blurry. I don't know why. Um, maybe try make it a little bit further. That's weird. I don't know why it's showing you that very blurry. Maria, I don't know why. Showing... I don't know why either. So it is a lazy lamp. Lazy and... lamp? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. I don't know why it is not. Maybe Perhaps can... my screen. Sorry. Yeah, if we can check your settings because uh, we would love to see when you're going to be doing exercises. So we want to be able to see what you're sharing. Check why, from some reason, it's, it makes blurring everything. It just shows you sharp, but everything else is blurry. So I didn't sure. make this when I just got connected. It uh, got everything blurred, so I, I will look into it. I'm sorry. Okay, okay, fantastic. So this is what I want you to do now. This is an example of a curious flower that I did. I prepared in advance. What I want you to do now, I want you, each one of you to write a very quick, paragraph synopsis developing your character and to basically in this case i'm going to read to you daisy was a very curious flower who wanted to see the world but you are just a flower flowers don't wander around her fellow flower friends kept telling her but daisy was too curious to learn so she didn't listen to them 
and went on a wild and magical adventure. So that's one example. I want to show you another example I created. The lazy turnip. Nip was a very lazy turnip who didn't like to do much except sitting in his little dig in the ground, eating and getting fat. His good friend Betty the Beat was constantly trying to convince him to join her for a stroll in the garden. But Nip was too lazy to move until one day Nip got so fat that when he was trying to get out of his dig, he couldn't. So what I want you to do now uh, for one or even two characters, if you want, I want you to write a little uh, synopsis of a story. OK, anybody, uh, everybody, anybody have questions about what we need to do right now? Right no, everything is clear. OK, so so do please, you, I want. Yes. Yes. Rafael. Do you have a, a structure for um, for this storyline or it's uh, it's free to us? It's free to you. I mean, I just gave you a couple of examples. Just write uh, uh, a little uh, synopsis. Like, for example, if you go to a bookstore, you would read it on the back of the book. What is what is this about? So I want you to write. Uh, so that character you just drew, I want you to give it a title. Uh, I think you already have a title, actually. But I want you to write a little uh, story description. OK? Oh, OK, OK. It's clear. So go ahead, I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, go for it, go for it. Anybody needs more time, guys? Laura, uh, Laura, are you? Do you need more time? I only wrote like two sentences. Two sentences. Okay, so I'll give you a couple more minutes because I want okay. you guys also to share. So I'll give you a couple okay. more minutes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. One of the things you will notice in the class, we're going to be doing uh, assignments on a very short, in a very short period of time. And uh, the reason that we're doing that, first of all, I want you to practice being very spontaneous. It doesn't have to be perfect. And when you, uh, you know, when the more you practice being spontaneous, the more easier for you is to generate ideas. So even if it's not perfect, that's fine. We're going to be learning to do things in a very, very rough and very uh, natural and uh, organic manner, which I think it's very important to cultivate. So who wants to uh, who wants to share first? Who is ready? They can share their uh, description. Who's ready? Maria, you need more time. I need a minute. I have it in my head. I didn't finish. Just... Okay. <laughs> okay. What about you, Rafael? Oh, uh, I'm ready. You're ready. Okay. Yeah. So, so let's uh, wait. Yeah. 
the lady pencil um, spend his day sleeping he wants to do everything at once and spend his time thinking about what to do but he never does anything and a day um three little dot okay excellent so uh, i want to first of all uh, tell you that when i think about a pencil the, the first thing that comes to mind in terms of a context is like you know the term to sharpen your pencil what it means in france you use that in canada as well uh, to yes sure. so mm. so you know when we think about the pencil is like is it is he a sharp this is just questions like when you if you would create a character is he like considered the sharpest pencil in the box or he's not very sharp you know this is like one thing for uh, you know you can address when you're creating a, a character based on a pencil you know what i mean yeah a kind of analogy Exactly, exactly. Wow. Analogy. Yeah. So what I was showing before without examples like the tree, uh, the, the sunflower seed, and also the carrot, any object we choose, whatever it is, whether it's a vegetable, if it's an animal, if it's a, something, it's a mineral, every object we can charge the object with the meaning. So when you choose a pencil, this is like, these are some of the ideas you can uh, play with like, uh, what I think about a pencil, what comes to your mind, Rafael? Um, uh, a lazy pencil is not uh, very useful. Actually, you know, it can be very useful because, you know, if you think about, uh, first of all, if you think about context of pencil inside a box, the pencils is something that you want to be using at some point. So, is uh, he doesn't want to be used he wants to maintain his uh, being perfect you know that's one thing you can play with being lazy so you mm. can also uh, explore other uh, reasons why he's lazy maybe he doesn't like to be sharpened etc so you know when you when you choose an object this is going to be part of our also our home assignment you want to play with association and context like see how far you can go with those things because that will be uh, serving uh, your plot when you were creating your story. So what about uh, Laura and Maria? Is any of you ready to share what you wrote? I'm ready. Okay, Laura, go ahead. Go for it. Okay. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> proud shoe. Forced, well, sorry. Proud shoe lifted her head high and strutted forcefully towards the party participants to present her golden gown and 10 inch heels. The party participants ignored her and continued sipping their martinis. Mm, beautiful. I love introducing martini to children. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful, really beautiful uh, written, Laura. Now let me ask you a couple of uh, questions like asked Raphael. When you think about the shoe, what ideas in terms of context come to mind when you think about shoe? What, what kind of subject matter can you utilize with the context of a shoe? Um, well, shoes have a lot of, um, they can be very egocentrical <laughs> or they can be very athletic or they mm -hmm. can be- In what sense? What was that? Oh yeah, now I see what you're saying. When you say, okay, when you say egocentric, basically you talk, you talk about the type of uh, utilities for which we use shoes. So they, yes, that, yeah, yes, okay. yes. Excellent. So Beautiful. it would be like archetypes, you know, different archetypal, you know, um, I, I'm not so sure if I'm saying that correctly, but, you know, just different personas of people and how they, how important shoes can be to people. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the context you are presenting is uh, shoes from the perspective of how they relate to people. So humans and yes. shoes, how they interact. Beautiful. Yes. So what about you guys? What would you suggest in terms of context for shoes? How can you play Laura? Uh, I, you cut out on that last bit. You said, how could you do what? So what I wanted to ask Maria and also Raphael, if you have any suggestions in terms of context of a shoe, like what would okay. you like to suggest to Laura from a point of view of a context of a shoe? Okay, I'll let you think about that. Here is an idea I would like to, to uh, share with you, uh, Laura. Like when I think about shoes, shoes always come in pairs. There's always right and the left. So 
what if we create a context of a shoe who's trying to find his soulmate? You know what I mean? Yeah, there so, you go. So here's an idea how you can utilize the shoe from a point of how you find your other half. So that's an, another idea. Mm -hmm. So Maria and Raphael, do you have any suggestions about shoes, like in terms of context and kind of what comes to your mind? Um, can we also? Yes. So yeah, go ahead, Maria, and then we're going to go to Raphael. What would you like to suggest to Laura when you think about shoes in terms of context and uh, allegories or whatever comes to your mind? Sometimes sh shoes don't fit. Uh, I mean that it can be the same size, but people sometimes have difference, di differences in size. Beautiful. Between... So it's not a match. It, they don't- Not uh, a match. Excellent. Beautiful. Thank you, Maria. Brilliant. What about you, Rafael? Uh, it um, ties his shoes, but it, it's come fast. It ties um, tie his uh, his shoes. So we need to tie our shoes. So we need to basically to secure them. That's what you mean? Yes. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> Beautiful. So you see, like with with a single object, how much you can uh, you can uh, basically evolve into many many ideas. So let's move forward. Uh, so we actually have five minutes left and I, I'm going to skip the other exercise. I'm just going to leave it for you for the, for the, for the homework. I'm going to add it to the homework. Uh, we have a few minutes left. So I just want to, uh, I prepared a couple of clips I want to show you. This is a clip from a movie called, animation called uh, The Box Trolls. It's a, it's, it's a stop, stop motion animation that is made by a company called Leica from Oregon uh, in America. And this is also very loosely based on a children's book, but really what I love about those characters, how unique they are and what a very unique way uh, they found to express those kind of uh, combining box with a troll and creating a whole, basically you mix two different things and you create a character out of them. So let's watch that uh, clip, which is give you an idea and a really beautiful uh, example. You know, I can't see anything. You can't see anything? I can't see the the show. What about uh, Maria and Raphael? Can you see it? Um, no, I think the the the, the picture is um, is uh, fi uh, is fixed. Oh, I'm not in for I'm not in the screen sharing. Okay, okay. Thank you for telling me that. Let me sure. screen sharing and pause. One second. So let me go back to my screen. And one second. Can everybody see that right now? Uh, yeah. Yes. Can you see that, Laura, in the Maria? Yeah. It, it, I, yes. Okay, I'm going to start the video clip again. It's again from the animated film, The Box Trolls.
The internet connection, so. Now he's much older, he grew up. Beautiful. Anybody here did not see uh, that film? I've never seen it. It's awesome, though. I love it. It is. It is. What yeah. about you, Maria? Maria and Rafael, are you familiar with the box trolls? No, no. Uh, I know Aleika Studio, but uh, not this movie. Okay. What about you, Maria? Have you ever seen this? I have seen it, but it is too dark for me. So I like, uh, like uh, more like colors and a better contrast. No, it is like in an under, underworld. You yes, know. but have you seen the film before? Are you familiar with this? I have seen the film with my kids, and oh, uh, it is uh, it is a film that is uh, well done, but it is not simply my style. Okay, beautiful. Anyway, that's that was one example, the quite opposite of that. Uh, of uh, let me one second, let me get. Can I interrupt for just a second? Yes. There, you know, the, I wrote down a couple themes here of they were doing art together, they were playing music together, there was bugs, dirty, they were dirty, they were falling down and laughing, there was facial expressions and dressing up in boxes. Uh -huh. And all those things feel so important to a child. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. There, there is, I mean, it works in so many levels. And of course, like Maria said, she, it's not her style. Uh, but uh, there are many, many ways to approach visual storytelling. And when you, the, the, the themes that you were just talking about, they're very deep, very, very important themes. Yes. And it's, it's beautiful that you, you caught on them like so quickly. <clears throat> so now I would like to show another quick example from Dr. Seuss from uh, the Lorax, which is in complete contrast to what we've just seen. So let's go back, let's go here. There is a delay and it's hard to hear. Yes. Okay. I remember seeing it. Hey guys, one, where's my backup chorus? 
Beautiful. All right, guys. Uh, what do you think about that one? Anybody here did not see Dr. Seuss, uh, the Lorax? Anybody here did not see that film? No? So I, I guess you all seen it. It's, it's really absolutely beautiful and so many deep uh, themes in the film that is touching absolutely uh, brilliant and beautiful. So let's get to the uh, to the homework, to the home assignment I would like you guys to do. Let me close this thing. Just one second. I think, did it close my Zoom? I think my Zoom has been... Uh... Okay, I think it stopped recording because we passed the two hour, uh, the two hour window. Okay, anyways. So uh, we, you cannot see my, uh, that's fine, my screen, but what I'm gonna like to do, I would like to share with you now. Okay, I'm back to the screen. Let me see, show screen. Okay, one second. I wanna share you with you the home assignment, what we're gonna be doing for home assignment. So here's what we'd like you to do for the, for, for the next week. Number one, I would like you to come up with a children's book title based on one character, just like what we did in the class, but I want you to come up with something from your own. I gave you a list of uh, objects and adjectives. I want you to come up with your own character that you can create. And I want you to write a brief book synopsis and draw the main character and a sidekick. So basically you create a character, you come up with a book title and a little description. And if you want, you can add a, a sidekick as well. That's number one. I'll just leave you, I'll give you guys a, a minute just to write it down. How long? Yeah. Uh, just a brief, a brief paragraph, just like what we did in the class, just a few sentences, kind of imagine it's a synopsis you would read on the back of a book in a bookstore, or if you read an online description, just a very brief description of your book. So character, sidekick, and a book title and a description. That's number one. Number two, Bring to the next class an example of a children's book and a character that you love from this book and explain what you like about it. So you can actually choose uh, something online or if you have the physical book, but I want you to give, bring this example and tell us why you like about it and uh, the character, the main, what's the main character and, what, and why, what's the reason. Tell us, explain why you like it and uh, what about it that you like. That's the second part of our assignment. So I'll give you a minute to just to write it down. So we're not necessarily, are, are you asking us to create it or are you asking us to go find something that we like? The first part was to create. The number okay. one is come up with a children's book uh, based on a character that you choose and you create. That's okay. number one. Number two is you bring uh, to the next class an example of, a, of an existing book that you like and the character that you like and explain uh, why you like it. When, what is it about it that you like about that book? Okay. Is, that clear, is that clear now? Yeah, I got it. Okay, excellent. And uh, for the, the character, uh, you, you, you will give uh, some uh, suggest, suggest, suggestions. What do you mean? Uh, a list for pick hidden. For pick, no, uh... no, I want you to come up with your own list. I gave you a list okay. in the class, but I, whatever comes to you choose, it, does, it can be anything you want. So think about okay. uh, uh, an object and an adjective, like we had turnip and you had the shoe, but I want you to choose something of your own. Okay? Okay. Okay. The third part of our home assignment is I want you to do one character study drawing of a toy that you like. So it could be a childhood toy that you liked when you were a kid, or it can be a toy that you saw recently, but I want you to do a drawing study. I want you to study the character, to draw it from your observation. 
That's the third part. Can you show us an example for this third part? Do you well, have for? Uh, well, I don't have a drawing example, but let's say uh, uh, you choose a toy. I'm, I'm going back to my merchandising photos, okay? So let's say we have a toy. One second, I'm getting to that slide. So let's say you have that a series of toys from the wild things are, for example, okay? So let's say you have you have these guys at your home. Let's say you have this collection. I want you to choose one of them and I want you to make a drawing of that of that toy from observation. I want to see so, how you yes. So it is a simple drawing from a toy. Exactly. That you like. More the, the, constru the, the constructions, the proportions and uh, stuff like that. Uh, I want you, I, I don't want to tell you how to do it. You can do it realistic. Oh, but I want you to uh, make your own study. Obviously, when you're going to show it to us, we want to be able to identify what you drew. So I think if you have uh, some level of resemblance, it's going to be very helpful. So let's say you choose uh, one of uh, Dr. Seuss characters and you want to draw it. We want to see how that resembles the original. Does it make sense? Yeah. OK. So this is pretty much what we have for today. And I want to see if you guys have any questions before we uh, finish the class about anything that we covered here today. But, but uh, will you submit us a schedule or something like uh, to know the days and the times we will connect? Uh, yes, you mean for the next classes? Yes. Yes, I'm going to send you. It's basically the next six weeks. It's going to be every Sunday from starting uh, starting today. So I'm going to send you uh, an email uh, with the weeks, uh, the next uh, five sessions we're going to have. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. And I have got, a question. Yes, Laura. So I don't want to overwhelm you with questions, but I am a question kind of person. Yes, please. So I am, I, when you gave us the invitation to send you questions, do mm -hmm. you have, you need to set, you may need to set a limit with me. <laughs> well, if, if I, if I see you're over exaggerating, I will, uh, I will tell <laughs> okay. you. So I, yeah, okay. please. What is your question? That will no. That was it. That ah. my question is: How many questions can I ask? It's okay if something comes to you. Feel free to ask. You know, okay. if it, you know, if it gets too much, I'll tell you. What about you, Rafael? Do you have any questions? Um, maybe, but uh, you talked about uh, woke and yes. uh, how, how to um, to to. Uh, 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 I need to uh, to be carried uh, carried about it, or or just no. I'm not you know, sure. It you know it depends on you. It's a good question because you know the whole walk walk thing. It's a whole movement. It's a mindset. So uh, I'm not talking about your homework right now. Homework you can do walk or not walk. It doesn't matter. But when you work on your personal project, are you talking about your personal project? Is that your question about? Well, yeah, yeah, my personal project. So uh, on your personal project, it's really a question of marketing because let's say you want to make your your project very walk in a mindset so when you do that you're gonna be uh, missing a lot of other people who don't like the whole walk thing movement so that's the consideration you can have so you can decide you know what i'm not going to touch anything walk because i don't want to create separation that's one that's one approach or you can say you know what i don't care i don't like anything walk i'm going to just do something totally the opposite of walk so then you know that you're going to miss all the people who are the walk movement so this is the kind of question you want to ask yourself. Does it make sense? Yes, yes. So that's something for you to discuss because at the end of the day, it's your project and the, you want to, you decide how big of an audience you want to appeal when you're going to create your project. So this is the kind of thing. So if, if, if you want to have a more wider appeal, just stay away from all, the whole walk thing and then you're going to be on the safe side. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Anybody else have any more questions? I do have one more question. Yes, Laura. So um, I love what you shared today. It's actually a mm -hmm. comment. I loved what you shared today. It was very inspiring. And thank you. It really stimulated me into, you know, you know, all these wonderful, more wonderful ideas. I have a very strong imagination. So this just activated that wonderfully. Thank you. The other piece, sure. though, is I am going to just say it is that I I'm really good with being out there, but 
when it comes to, and this is something I can talk to you personally, but um, when it comes to like bringing all the pieces together, that is definitely where I need some help. So please be more specific when you say bring pieces together. Uh, send me an email and be more specific because I'm, I'm not clear. I'm not exactly clear what you mean when you say bring the pieces together. So maybe you show me what are the pieces and uh, tell, uh, then we can find out what, uh, what is needed to bring them, excuse me, to bring them together. Does it make sense? Yeah, I'll just give you a quick example is like you've talked about a lot of things today. You've talked about, you know, really thinking out of the box, creativity, letting the imagination go, marketing, um, you know, just finding your calling of the way that, you know, your own unique style, authenticism. You know, you've talked about a lot of things today mm -hmm. and I'm grateful, but I also feel like, oh my gosh, it's just gotten so much bigger and wider, you know? So how do I draw it in to, to make, to be a piece, right? Yes, the way you start, it basically start with a home assignment. Uh, that's okay. that's kind of going to be your safe rail. Start with that. Okay. Once you do the home assignment, you bring it to the class, and then we can be a more clear uh, your about your direction. That's the reason I give you those assignments to help you find your own uh, theme to narrow down your perception. So that's that's the reason I give you those assignments. Okay. All right, guys, we are already almost quarter an hour after uh, two hours. So I want to thank you so much for being here today. I had a great time and I'm really uh, looking forward to our next five weeks. I'm going to follow up. I'm going to send you uh, the recording link uh, for this class. so You can watch it again if you'd like. And uh, please feel free to contact me during the week if you have any questions about the home assignment. Otherwise, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, see what you created uh, next week. And again, thank you so much. And I look forward to see you all next week. Have a great thank week, everybody. You. Thank you. Have a good you. night. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. Rafael. Bye. 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 Bye.